go forth. Let it minister to your people. Let it bring them the comfort and the peace and the joy that it has done for me. Let it be, Father, let it be for your honor and for your esteem alone. Let your will be done, Father. Let your will be done here and wherever your, your body of believers may be in this world. Let this message go forth and touch them. Let them come to a complete understanding of who you are. Hallelujah, Father. Toda Rabbi Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Today we're going to look at obeying the Torah of righteousness. See, the Torah often refers to the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. The Torah was written by Moshe. So it's called the book of the law of Moshe. And Joshua 8.31 and Nehemiah 8.1. Eventually, it was originally written as one book, but was later divided for easy handling and reading. See, the Torah is also used for the laws given to Israel on a particular subject, such as the, the law or the Torah of the sin offering, the law or the Torah about leprosy, and the law or the Torah about the Nazarite which is found in Leviticus 6, verses 25, as well as 14 and 57, and Numbers 6, 13. See, the word, the Hebrew word Torah, which is the Strong's 84, 51, means teaching or instruction. But it's usually translated into English word law. Because of this translation, there is a great misunderstanding of what Torah truly is. See, Torah is not the law. When we use the word law, we assume a certain meaning and concept of the word that is not present in the Hebrew scriptures. A Hebraic definition of Torah is a set of instructions from a father to his children. Violation of these instructions are disciplined in order to foster obedience and to train his children. Notice how the word Torah is translated in the New International Version translation in the following passages. See, for Yahuwah corrects or chastens, he reproves his, him who he loves as a father, the son in whom he delights, in Proverbs 3, verses 12. It is for discipline that you have to endure. Yahuwah is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline, in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Besides this, we have earthly fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the father of Ruachs and live? Hebrews 12, 7 and 9. Listen, my son, to the father's instructions, and do not forsake your mother's teaching, the Torah. Proverbs 1, 8. My son, do not forget my teaching, my Torah. But keep my commands in your heart. Proverbs 3 1. The purpose of parents' Torah is to teach and to bring the children to maturity. If the Torah is violated out of disrespect or defiant disobedience, the child is punished. If the child desires to follow the instructions out of a loving obedience but falls short of the expectations, the child is commended for the effort and counseled on how to perform the instructions better the next time. Unlike Torah, law is a set of rules from a, governing, a government and binding on a community. Violation of the rules require punishment. With this type of law, there is no room for teaching. Either the law was broken with the penalty of punishment, or it was not broken. Yahuwah, as our Heavenly Father, gives His children His Torah, His teaching and instructions in the same manner. Baruch is the man you discipline, O Yahuwah, the man you teach from your Torah, from your teachings and instructions, Psalms 94, verses 12. The righteousness of Torah, 
This is what we're looking at this morning. Because there is right righteousness in obedience to the Torah. See, the word righteous is a translation of the Hebrew uh, verb tzedak, which is the strong 66-63, which means to walk a straight line. From this root comes the noun tzadik, the strong 66-62, which means a straight line. This can literally mean a straight line or figuratively what is right, which is where we get the word right and righteous. Torah, the teaching and instructions, is a way of life or a way to walk. The Torah is a straight line and teaches Yahuwah's children how to walk a straight line. Therefore, the Torah is the straight line by which his children are to walk. When you walk, they will guide you. When you lie down, they will watch over you. When you awake, they will speak to you. For this commandment is a lamb. This Torah, this teaching and instructions is a light. And the reproofs of discipline are the way to life. Proverbs 6, 23 and Psalms 119, verse 105. <clears throat> and what other nation is so great as to have such righteousness? Sadiq decrees and judgments as this body of Torah I am setting before you today. Deuteronomy 4.8. See, Azadik is also one who walks a straight line or a righteous one. Those who follow the righteous Torah are considered righteous, uh, Azadik. And if we are careful to obey all this Torah before Yahuwah, our Elohim, as he has commanded us, that we will uh, that will be our righteousness. Deuteronomy 6, verse 25. You will again see the distinction between the righteous, Zadid, and the wicked, between those who serve Yahuwah and those who do not, in Malachi 3, 18. The New Covenant also teaches that righteousness comes from obedience to the Torah. For it is not those who hear the Torah who are righteous in Yahuwah's sight, but it is those who obey the Torah, his teachings and instructions, who will be declared righteous, according to Romans 2.13. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. He who does what is right is righteous. 1 John 3.7. Hosea 4.6 says, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I reject you from being a priest to me. And since you have forgotten the Torah of your Elohim, I will also forget your children. Jeremiah 26, verse 4 through 6 says, You shall say to them, Let's say Yahuwah, if you will not listen to me to walk in Torah that I have set before you, and to listen to the words of my servants, the prophets, who I send to you urgently, though you have not listened, then I will make this house like Chiloah, a place of peace, of rest, and I will make this city a curse for all the nations of the earth. Daniel 9, verses 9 through 10 says, To Yahuwah our Elohim belong mercy and forgiveness, for we have rebelled against him, and have not obeyed the voice of Yahuwah our Elohim by walking in his Torah his teachings, and his instructions, which is set before us by his servants, the prophets. The Baraka of obedience to the Torah. And it shall come to pass, if you shall listen diligently unto the voice of Yahuwah your Elohim, to serve and to do all his commandments which I command you this day, that Yahuwah your Elohim will set you on high above all the nations of the earth. And all of these, Baraka, shall come on you and overtake you, if you shall listen unto the voice of Yahuwah, your Elohim. Over and over in Yahuwah's word, we are promised that when we honor him and obey his commandments, his statutes, which are his conditions and requirements, and ordinances, which are his judgments, he will Barak us. That's quite a promise. See, Baruch are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the Torah, who walk in the teachings and the instructions of Yahuwah. 
Baruch are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart, who also do no wrong, but walk in his ways. Those are found in Psalms 119, verses 2 and 3, Deuteronomy 6 through 8, as well as 28 and 30, and Leviticus 26, and on and on and on. This same promise is given to us so many times throughout the Torah or the Tanakh that it, it sets it into a place where this is really what he's telling us. This is his words to us that we must seek and understand what is the importance of the Torah. See, Scripture says that obedience to the statutes, ordinances, and judgments brings a baraka. I highly recommend studying out the Feast of Yahuwah, his Sabbaths, and his clean eating, all of those things which he has outlined for us in the Torah. All according to Yahuwah's everlasting and unchanging word are marks of righteousness and bring baraka. They bring blessings to our lives. Genesis 26, 5 says, Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, he kept my observance, my commandments, my mitzvah, my statutes, my conditions and requirements, and my Torah, my teachings and instructions. Do we start to see how this changes everything by understanding one word and what it really means? It changes how we receive it, how we perceive it, how it can change us, how we look to it as our instructions and our teachers instead of something that's bad, like a law that you don't want to touch. We're supposed to embrace this. We're supposed to love this. This should be a joy to us. The world has made it so ugly that people avoid it. They don't want anything to do with it because they are misinformed. They are deceived by what the world has made this one word mean. Exodus 12, 49 says, There shall be one Torah, one teaching and instruction for the native and for the strangers who sojourns among you. That's for all of those people that want to know Yahuwah. They want to know his will. They want to understand what is important to him. So therefore, it is for those that are seeking him, that are called by him, that desire to honor and obey him. Hallelujah. Exodus 13, 9 says, And it shall be to you as a sign on your hand and as a memorial between your eyes that the Torah, the teaching and instructions of Yahuwah, may be in your mouth. How can they be in your mouth if you don't know what they are? That's why uh, uh, Moshe was instructed that every year the people of Israel would come and, and read the Torah so that it was in their minds, it was in their hearts, and so it was in their mouth. Hallelujah. Number 621. This is the Torah. This is the teaching and instructions of the Nazarite. Nazarite means one is devoted or consecrated. But if he vows an offering to Yahuwah above his Nazarite vow, as he can afford, in exact accordance with the vow that he takes, then he shall do in addition to the Torah, in addition to the teaching and instructions of the Nazarite, the devoted or the consecrated one. Psalms 1, verse 2, but his delight is in the Torah. It's in the teachings and the instructions. How can it be a delight to you if it's a law, if it's a bad thing, something that's going to bring punishment to you? It's not. It's because that's not the truth. The truth is it's Yahuwah's loving teaching and instructions to show us the way and how we ought to live and walk each day. See, but his delight is in the Torah of Yahuwah, and on his Torah he meditates day and night. We are to meditate day and night, to grab this and understand it, to be able to understand what it's telling us so that we can walk by it, we can live by it. It becomes part of who we are. We begin to uh, imitate what it is that we are reading. It becomes alive in us. It begins to transform us. It changes our understanding. It changes our ways. When this word penetrates you, it changes you. It transforms you into the image and the likeness of Yahushua HaMashiach, which is our example. 
This is what he lived by. This is actually who he is because he is the Torah. He is the word of Yahuwah that was spoken by Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Nehemiah 9 verse 13 says, You came down on Mount Sinai and spoke with them from the Shamayim and gave them right rules and a true Torah, true teaching and instructions that are good. And he also gave the commandments, Psalms 119, verse 33. Psalms 119, verse 7 says, The Torah, or the teaching and the instructions of Yahuwah, is perfect. Reviving the soul, the testimony of Yahuwah is sure, making wise the one, the one that reads it, the one that studies it. Ezra 7.10 says, For Ezra had set his heart to study the Torah of Yahuwah, and to do it, and to teach his statute, his conditions, his requirements. Hallelujah. I got to minimize this so I can see better. Uh, let me start this over again where I left off because I couldn't see very clearly. Ezra had set his heart to study the Torah, the teachings and the instructions of Yahuwah, and to do it, and to teach his statutes, his conditions and requirements, and his rules, his judgments in Yisrael. Psalm 78 1 says, Give ear, O my people, to my Torah. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Psalms 94 12. Baruch is the man who, whom you discipline, O Yahuwah and whom you teach out of your Torah. There's teaching again. His instructions, his teaching comes from the Torah. Psalm 119, verse 165. Great shalom have those who love your Torah. Nothing can make them stumble. Why is it that it says that you're going to love the Torah? And when you love it, you begin to do it because... Nothing can make you stumble because it gives you wisdom. It makes you wise about the things of the world so you can avoid those stumbling blocks, so you can overcome those things of the world, so you can overcome and be a real child of Elohim. Hallelujah. Psalm 19, 174. I long for your salvation, O Yahuwah, and your Torah is my delight. Psalm, uh, uh, Proverbs 4, verse 1 through 2. Here, O sons of Father's instructions, and be attentive that you may gain insight. For I give you good instructions. Do not forsake my Torah. Proverbs 6.23, For the commandment is a lamp, and the Torah is a light, and the reproofs of discipline are the way of life. That's a lot contained in those few words. The commandments which are instinct commandments of how we ought to live. Number one, love your Elohim with all your heart, mind, and soul. Hallelujah. That means to do. Yahushua said, if you love me, you obey. You'll do my commandments, which is the same commandments that his father gave us. Nothing has changed. In that Torah, his teaching and his instructions is a light for us. It lights the way. It, it, we are to be that light, right, in this world? How can we be a light if we don't have the light in us? Hallelujah. Proverbs 28, 7. The one who keeps the Torah is a son with understanding, but a companion of gluttons shames his father. Proverbs 28, 9. If one turns away his ear from hearing the Torah from hearing his teachings and his instructions, then even his prayer is an abomination. Whoa. So there's something tied to what the Torah is telling us and is teaching us and is instructing us, that if we don't have that in our lives, even our prayer is an abomination to Yahuwah. That's hard to fathom for most people. They think that he hears everybody's prayers. But here it says, if you turn your ear from hearing the Torah, which a lot of this uh, religious world has done, saying it's done away with, it doesn't uh, exist anymore, it's not for us. Guess what? This tells me that their prayers are an abomination to Yahuwah. Ouch. 
Isaiah 8, 16. Bind up the testimony. Seal the Torah among my disciples. See, the Torah has to be a way of life for us. His true believers are going to live according to the Torah. The Torah is a way of life from birth to death. Yahuwah's Torah, his teaching and his instructions, teaches his people how to live a kadosh life. The Torah covers such areas as community, medicine, diet, health, clothing, housing, safety, morality, ceremonies, kadosh days, worship, relationships between family and neighbors, and the list of uh, is practically endless. It continues. It gives us answers for anything that we need answers to, if you'll just seek it out. See, the Torah is a living word to guide, lead, and direct the lives of Yahuwah's people each and every day. Like a lamp, the commands and the Torah are a light and a way of life, correction and discipline, according to Proverbs 6.23. Baruch is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the Torah of Yahuwah. And on his Torah, he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Psalms 1, verses 1 through 3. It feeds us, it nourishes us, it empowers us to continue to do those things which Yahuwah is directing and leading us to do. Without the Torah and the understanding of what is written there, we go astray. We have no clue what we are to do, how we are to live, how we are to walk. We know nothing. Therefore, we, we walk aimlessly. We're not walking any straight path. We're going wherever our flesh leads us. And that is contrary to what the Torah teaches us. See, the psalmist describes the attitude that the man of Yahuwah should have towards the Torah. When he said, the Torah, the teachings and the instructions from your mouth is more precious to me than thousands of pieces of silver and gold. 119, verse 72. The Torah is not meant to be a drudgery of requirements, as the world law implies but a joy and a delight to the people of Yahuwah. Isn't that contrary? Isn't that amazing? How can it be the complete opposite of what the world paints it to be? Because they have no clue what it is. They've rejected it. But we even find the Torah in the New Covenant. When Yahuwah promised the New Covenant to Israel, he said, I will put my Torah, my teachings, and my instructions in their minds and write it in their hearts. Jeremiah 31. Verse 33, and it's also quoted in Hebrews 8.16. Here we see that Yahuwah plans, uh, plans in the New Covenant include his Torah. In the New Covenant, the word nomos, the Greek translation of the Hebrew word Torah, is used about 200 times. Not one of these 200 occurrences ever says that the Torah has been abolished or done away. Rather, the New Covenant reaffirms the existence of the Torah. Here are just a few of these passages. It's easier for the Shamayim and the earth to disappear than for the least stroke of the pen to drop out of the Torah. Luke 16, verse 17. But the man who looks intently into the perfect Torah that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it. He will be Baruch in what he does. James 1.25. There's a key there. Doing it. If you do it, if you live it, then you will receive the Baraka in whatever you do. Do not think that I, Yahushua, have come to abolish the Torah or the prophets. Those are the prophecies that are spoken about him. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill to live according to them. I tell you the truth, until the Shamayim and the earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the Torah until everything is accomplished. Matthew 5, verses 17 and 18. 
And I can tell you right now, everything has not been accomplished. So the Torah is still in place for you and I to live it. They said to Saul, or to Shaul, I'm sorry. You see, brother, how many thousands of Hebrews have believed? And all of them are zealous for the Torah. Acts 21, 20. Many have mistaken idea that Shaul or Paul taught against the Torah. There is no question that Shaul, a devoted Pharisee, lived his life according to Torah. Let us examine some, uh, examine some of Shaul's statements regarding the Torah. He said, I believe everything that agrees with the Torah and that is written in the prophets. That was written in Acts 24, 14. He agrees with the Torah. Hmm. I have done nothing wrong against the Torah of the Hebrews or against the temple or against Caesar. Acts 25, 8. So then the Torah is kadosh and the commandment is kadosh, righteous and good. Romans 7, verse 12. Did he really say that? Do you not know, brothers, for I am speaking to men who know the Torah, that the Torah has authority over a man only as long as he, what? He lives. So as long as you live, there's still authority. The Torah still has authority over a man, according to Romans 7.1. How can that be if it's done away with? Do we then nullify, which means to destroy or abolish the Torah? By this, Amuna, by the faith that we have in Yahusha. He says, no, not at all. Rather, we uphold the Torah. We uphold the teachings and instructions. That's in Romans 3, verse 31. For everything that was written in the past, that's the Torah and the prophets, was written to tell us, to teach us, to show us, to reveal to us the will of the Father. Romans 15, verse 4. This should make you fall in love with the Torah, because there is love in the Torah. We find the Torah of love. Love, Yahuwah, your Elohim, with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Deuteronomy 6, verse 5 through 7. That seems like you're doing that all day long, no matter what you're doing. The Torah should be in your mind. It should be on your mouth. You should be speaking these words, meditating on these words. Hallelujah. And now, Israel, what does Yahuwah your Elohim ask of you but to fear Yahuwah your Elohim, to walk in all of his ways, to love him, to serve Yahuwah your Elohim with all of your heart and with all of your soul? Deuteronomy 10, 12. It was not Yahuwah's intentions to require his people to obey Torah out of fear and obligation, but rather out of love for him and his teachings. Yahuwah desires that all his children place his Torah within their hearts and obey him as a child obeys his father, out of love and respect. King David explained his attitude towards Torah when he said, Oh, how I love your Torah. I meditate on it all day long. Kind of what we just heard a little bit ago. And that's found in Psalms 119.97, which Many people love Psalms and the teachings of Psalms. And if you look in Psalms, you're going to find this type of teaching throughout. David loved the Torah. Proverbs 7, verses 2 through 3 says, Keep my commands and, I, and you will live. Guard my Torah. He didn't say reject it. He said guard it. What do you do when you guard something? You surround it. You protect it with everything you have. So you are to guard my Torah as the apple of your eye. You should be cherishing this thing. The apple of your eye is a positive thing. Bind them on your fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Wow. Sounds like we're supposed to just dive right into this Torah and let it just get us all wet. Let us really just get soaked up with it. Hallelujah. If the Torah is not written on your heart, then the Torah is only an obligation, a set of rules that one must live by, and are therefore a burden. 
But once the Torah is written on your heart, the person then keeps the Torah with love, joy, and gladness. I desire to do your will. Uh-oh, what's the will of Yahuwah? I desire to do your will, my Elohim. What is it that he desires to do? What's the will of Yahuwah? That we obey, that we do your Torah. And that your Torah is written on my heart. Psalms 40, verse 8. How can, see, people don't understand. This is the will of Yahuwah. Many people say, let me do the will of God. Well, what is that will? Right here. We just read it. Teach me, O Yahuwah, to follow your statutes, follow your conditions and requirements. Then I will keep them to the end. Give me understanding, and I will keep your Torah and obey it with all my heart. Direct me in the path of your commands, for there I find delight. Why? How is it that we can find delight in obeying the commandments? Aren't they a burden? Aren't they difficult to do? Nobody can keep the commandments, really. I don't see that here. I see the opposite being taught. Even Shaul had the same affection for the Torah that David did, where he said, I delight in you who is Torah. I myself, in my mind, am a slave to you who is Torah. Really? How come people say that Shaul was against it? If, if it was such a delight, if it was in his mind, if he was a slave to it, that's Romans 7, verse 22 through 25. Love and Torah are inseparable. If one keeps and obeys the Torah, he is showing his love to Yahuwah. If one loves Yahuwah, he will keep and obey his Torah. We can see this concept in many passages if we understand Hebrew parallelism. Hebrew parallelism is a form of Hebrew poetry, which is saying the same thing in two or more different ways. As an example, let us look at Deuteronomy 11, verse 1. Love Yahuwah, your Elohim, and keep his statutes, his conditions and requirements, and his ordinances, his judgments, and you keep his Torah, his teachings and instructions, and commands always. See, when we read this as Westerners of the 20th century, we see two completely different statements. The first is, love Yahuwah, your Elohim. And the second is to keep his statutes, his conditions and requirements, his ordinances, which are his judgments, and to keep his Torah, his teaching and his instructions, and commandments always. See, these are not two different ideas, but rather the same thing. And the following passages are more examples of Hebrew parallels. And so that we can better understand what the love of Yahuwah really means. So if you faithfully obey the commands, I am giving you today to love Yahuwah your Elohim and to serve him with all of your heart, with all of your soul. Then I will send a rain on your land in its season. Deuteronomy eleven thirteen. If you carefully observe all the commands I am giving you to follow, to love Yahuwah your Elohim, to walk in all of his ways and to hold fast to him, then Yahuwah will drive out all these nations before you. Deuteronomy eleven twenty two. For I command you today to love Yahuwah your Elohim, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commands, his statutes, and ordinances, as well as the Torah. Then you will live and increase, and Yahuwah your Elohim will barak you in the land you are entering to possess. Deuteronomy 30, verse 16. In our 20th century Western culture, we usually view love as an emotion. From a Hebraic perspective, love is not an emotion, but rather an action. If I, love, if I say that I love someone, but never impart action into the relationship, there's no love. In the passages above, we see action words like keep, obey, walk, hold fast, and serve, being equated to the word love. Observance of the Torah is not only the means by which we demonstrate our love to Yahuwah but it is also the means by which we demonstrate our love to our neighbors. Again, if I love my neighbor, I will act upon it. See, many of the commands in the Torah deal with relationships between family, neighbors, and foreigners. Do not hate your brother in your heart. 
rebuke your brother, frankly, so you will not share in his guilt. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against one of your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am Yahuwah. Leviticus 19, verse 17 through 18. This connection between obedience to the Torah and love for Yahuwah is carried over into the New Testament or the New Covenant as well. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love. John 15, verse 10. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For he who loves his fellow man has fulfilled or lived according to the Torah, the teachings and the instructions. The commandments, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not covet, and, and whatever other commandments there may be are summed up in this one rule. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does not harm, uh, love does no harm to its neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the Torah. It's the fulfillment of Yahuwah's teaching and instructions to us, according to Romans 13, verses 8 and 10. We know that we have come to know him if we obey his commands. The man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But if anyone obeys his word, Yahuwah's love is truly made complete in him. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Yahusha did. 1 John 2, verses 3 through 6. See, the last line in this passage says, we must walk as Yahusha did. Do we really know how Yahusha walked? Yahusha was a Hebrew who lived a strict life according to Torah. He walked that straight line perfectly and taught others to do the same. Those who claim to follow the steps of the Mashiach but do not walk according to the Torah are a liar, as the last passage states. It has been given me great joy to find some of you children walking in the truth, just as the Father commanded us. And now, dear lady, I am not writing you a new command, but one we have heard from, what? The beginning. I ask that we love one another, and this is love, that we walk in obedience to his commands. As you have heard from, again, the very beginning, those are the commandments that were given us in the beginning on Mount Sinai, his commands is that you walk in love. That's 2 John 4, 6. Four through six, rather. If you love me, you will obey what I command. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. John 14 and 15, as well as 21 and 23. Those who obey his commands live in him and he in them. That's how we become one with him. Same as he became one with the Father. He obeyed. He loved the, the, right, the righteousness of Yahuwah. He loved the right, uh, the right rulings. He loved the Torah. He loved all that the Father was and what he stood for, who he was, his character, and his Torah, of course. So those who obey his commands live in him, and he in them. 1 John 3, verse 24. Now we know that whatever Torah says, it speaks to those who are under the Torah, so that every mouth may be closed and all the world may become accountable to Yahuwah, because by the works of the Torah, no flesh will be justified in his sight. For through Torah comes the knowledge of sin, Romans 3, verse 19 through 20. That's how we know what sin is. If you don't know the Torah, how can you know what the sin is that's separating you from the Father? For what Torah could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, Yahuwah did, sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and as an offering for sin. He condemned sin in the flesh so that the requirement of the Torah might be fulfilled in us, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Ruach. Romans 8, verses 3 and 4. 
So I would gather to say or venture to say here that if you're able to walk according to the Torah, then you're walking according to the Ruach. You can't walk according to the Ruach if you're not walking according to the Torah. They go hand in hand. The Ruach leads you to fulfill the Torah, to live according to it. It's actually what writes it in your heart and your mind as you study it and meditate on it. The Ruach does these things that's inside of you. Hallelujah. So what shall we say then? Is the Torah sin? May it never be. On the contrary, I would not have come to, the, to know sin except through the Torah. For I would not have known about coveting if the Torah had not said, you shall not covet. Romans 7, verse 7, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not, you shall not, all of these things, or you shall, whatever it is that it says comes from the Torah. That's the only way we can know what it is saying to us is by studying and understanding what the Torah is teaching us. Again, that's those teachings, the instructions on how we are to live. So then, the Torah, the teachings and the instructions is kadosh. It's holy, if you will. And the commandment is kadosh, or holy, if you will. And it's righteous, and it is good. Therefore, the Torah has become our tutor to lead us to the Mashiach, so that we may be justified by Amunah, or faith, if you will. Galatians 3, verse 24. I really believe that this study has been prompted so that each and every one of us that are hearing it and seeing it with our own eyes can start to gain a love for it, a passion for it, to begin to desire to know what is it telling us so that we can live according to it. Yahuwah is so good. He's so faithful. And he knows what his children need. And it's his children that are pursuing him in his ways that will find that the Torah is good. It actually is something that we should take joy and pleasure in. It should become a treasure to us, not a burden. So continue to seek Yahuwah's word. Continue to study it. Continue to understand and seek what's in there that I need to change in my life and allow it to speak to you so it can transform you. That is how we are changed, by living it, by walking it, by being doers and not hearers only. All of these things fulfill what the scripture teaches us. If we really desire to walk according to Yahuwah's will, to bring pleasure and joy to him, then we must, we must know his Torah. We must live by his Torah and embrace it and let it change us and transform us into who we are to be. He has a plan for us. Each and every one of us, he has a plan for. And this is where you're going to find it. You can't find it by walking contrary to it. Because even your prayers are an abomination, according to Scripture. He doesn't hear your prayers. So we need to, we need to adjust our lives. We need to adjust our understanding and begin to dig into what the Word is really telling us. I'm sure that this study may be a shock to some that are hearing it, that are finding that, hey, the Torah is actually good that it's actually not a set of laws that are going to condemn me, that are bad for me, but actually they're loving instructions from the Father that tells me how I should live righteously before him to empower me to actually do so? Wow, what a changing concept. Again, another study that is twisted and, and, is, and is really perverted, the word of Yahuwah, and now it has been brought to light, and now there's clarity and understanding about what Torah is. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this teaching. We thank you for the words and the study that come forth and that it is there to transform us, to change us into your son's likeness. So we thank you, Father. And we ask that you'll continue to move within your people, that you'll continue to show us, to reveal to us your truths, and that you'll continue to change us, to mold us, and to shape us, to make us more like Yahusha, so that we can be pleasing in your sight, Father, so that we can bring joy and honor to you and do all that you have prescribed for us to do. We give you praise and honor this day, Father Yahuwah, through and in Yahusha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. Toda Rabbi Yahuwah. Barak your name forevermore. We thank you, Father.
Hallelujah. All righty. Now let me come back to everybody so we can see what everyone's got to say here. I need to get past this here. There we go. Stop sharing. And unmute you guys. Oop, wrong one. I'll get better at this, I promise. The more I do it, the better I'm gonna get. Unmute. Oh, all right. I, I think you did good, actually. I'm gonna hope this is recorded because I have a friend who probably should hear this. All right, who is that just speaking? I'm sorry, I unmuted I'm sorry. everybody all at one time here and I'm not sure who is, uh, who's speaking. Is that Carter? Carter, yeah. All right, give me one second here, please, Carters. All right, now I'm gonna unmute Carters, that way I can speak to you and not hear background noise. If I can. Unmute. Are we fighting each other? There, I think I got you now. Are you there? Shabbat shalom. Let me turn on my camera so you can see me too. There you go. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. All right. And you were saying, my friend? Oh, I you said you'll get better. I said I thought it was pretty good. I hope it was recorded because I actually have a good friend of mine that I feel like could use to hear that. Hallelujah. We have a lot of friends that need to hear this, in my opinion. But uh, yes, uh, it is recorded multiple times. So I have it on YouTube uh, and I have it recorded here on Zoom. So you're being recorded right now. So, you know. <laughs> but anyways, uh, is there anything since we're talking, is there anything you'd like to add or anything uh, that, that maybe can open somebody's eyes, uh, some other perspectives on this? <laughs> the camera shy, I see. And now me, oh. okay. You said recorded, <laughs> and now it's, it's different. So, ah, uh, I understand. Well, if you'd like to turn your camera off, you can do that. So you're, but we all see you already. So, <laughs> good to see you, anyways. So, is it? You have anything else you like to add? No. I'll take that as a no. Then, uh, all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, well, good to have you this morning. All right, um, where is Brother D? Where are you at? There you are, I see you over there. Are we on two different uh, things this morning or no? No, for right now, I'm just on my phone. Okay. On, on the phone, my wife's phone. Gotcha. Uh, so, Brother Carter, bro Brother Carter, um, I just met him uh, this week. We spoke over the phone, so today's his birthday. He sounds great. I really like the guy a lot. Um, so, glad to have you here today, Carter, and your lovely wife, Shalom. 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 My well, wife. When I texted you earlier, yeah, you were saying it was ten o'clock your time. So I thought it was going to be nine o'clock my time. So when I got up after nine o'clock. <laughs> Because I didn't set an alarm, I didn't want to just pop in and you guys are recording. I didn't know exactly how it works, so I figured I'd just shoot you a text message and hope for the best. Got you, no problem, Carter. It's all good. Um, so, brother Rick, I don't have anything to add. Uh, and and Rick, remember, you have to mute your mic when you're not talking because there's a lot of echo from your from your microphone. You got to remember that. Uh, I don't have anything to add, brother Rick. I'm going to be sharing this teaching sharing this video, definitely uh, spreading this. It's a good foundation uh, for people coming out of Christianity and, uh, you know, all that. I think you brought out tons of scriptures to affirm the beauty of the Torah. So um, I think it was great, man. I got nothing, nothing to add. I'm just over here putting new strings on my guitar, my baby. So uh, you can go ahead to the next person, Brother Rick. And shalom to you and Mama Linda. Yes, <laughs> home to you too, she says. Hi, everybody. 
I love you all. Thank you for your prayers. Hey, get those strings on there. We got to hear you play today, for sure. Yes. All righty. Well, I see Rod there, so I'm going to go to you next, my friend. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, everyone. And uh, welcome, Carters. Um, yeah, no, nah, Rick, I, I thought uh, I thought you did a really good job of, you know, expressing and showing the beauty of the law and how it's good and how it's, you know, Yah's perfect gift to us, you know. Um, and I had, you know, uh, I was in total agreement of it. Uh, the only thing I, that I that I disagreed with was removing law from the meaning of Torah, because it's still, you know, instruction is a law and a, a direct instruction is a direct order. And to sin is to be lawless. So it's still judicial in the sight of Yah. So I think that law is a perfect, has a perfect um, opportunity for us to have a righteous fear, uh, a, a good balance of fear towards Yah's instruction. So I think that law is still part of that meaning. You understand what I'm saying? I think I think though teaching is a good way to express it, but we can't remove law from it because it is a judicial. You know, if you if you sin, you know, and continue to sin, death is the penalty. That's a judgment. You know, so we have to keep that in mind. You know, when we look at Torah. And what it means. No, I agree with you, and that is one of the meanings. I think I pointed that out as well. But my, I guess what I was trying trying to say is that I didn't want to put it in the context of the way uh, most, I guess, of the Christian world puts it that it's a bad thing to avoid it at all costs. You know, um, but you're you're right, 100 percent right. It it is still part of that, and. Uh, and, and there is judgment. There is uh, things, the consequences, if you will, to it. Uh, so you're 100% right. Um, but I was trying to get to the, the point of it's not to the other. I guess I probably missed that a little short. So you came and fulfilled that. So I thank you for that. Yeah, no, you, you did a great job of, of expressing uh, what, the, what it wasn't, you know, specifically the way it's taught. Like you said, I agree with that. Okay. Well, I'm good then. Great job. Hey, we're in agreement then. Great job. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. All right, brother, brother uh, JP, I, I see you over there walking around, so I think that means with your camera on, you got something you might want to say, because I got to see that smiling face. Yeah, there he is. Go hey, for it, brother. Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, my family, my brothers and sisters throughout the nation and hopefully the world, you know. Uh, man, this is beautiful. You know, it's really beautiful. And uh, one of the things I was thinking of is uh, coming out, or not even coming out because I never was really fully in, but, you know, understanding this, uh, the difference between today, the way that the, uh, I guess you would say the church is and compared to the truth, uh, I was, I was thinking about that verse, 2 John 4, 6, and uh, talking about, you know, if you love him and, and you'll follow his command. I don't know if that was the one, but it reminded me of that. You know, if you love me, you'll follow my commandments. And I said, well, let me go and look at the word commandment. And I'm looking at it and I'm seeing all the times. And I'm like, I think one of the things about it is I want to bring up is that they, they misinterpret the definition. You know, today they misinterpret the definition. So their definition of commandment is, is really not the full grasp of commandment. And then I go into the word and I'm seeing how it goes back to a base word where we're seeing the Messiah commanding and charging and, and saying to do these things. to And it's, and it's sim in a different form, too, not just the commandments. All, you know, when you go to the base word, you're seeing some other things happening where it's authoritative and, and the and the strongs it says an authoritative prescription so it's really like i guess what i'm trying to say is we got to be careful and us also in the world is not to minimize and try to 
like weaken the words and say, oh, it's just, you know, the Ten Commandments. Because then you just, you really, they really minimize and they weaken it instead of saying commandment. Like you don't, the all, everything, all the precepts upon precepts. So it's beautiful, man. And, you know, and, and I, I took a lot of learning and I'm going to continue to learn because I think it's important that we continue to study and search the words, especially, you know, I was just talking to brother Toby last night and we was talking about searching the words and just digging on those words, man. Cause the English language sometimes doesn't do the justice that it, that these words, you know, truly deserve. And so, and the same thing with this word commandment, it, that's not even, it's not enough, you know, but, Definitely, you know, I appreciate it all. You know, I think that a lot of people need to hear this because there's so much, there's so many people who are defiant against the, you know, all the laws and the Torah and the commandments and how, you know, we want to say it, you know, if you want to, it's just, they're so defiant towards it. They're so, and I can understand because the flesh is weak and we don't want to, you know, we're like, ah, oh, well, to do all those things, like, but then when you live them, it's not that bad. You know, I don't go around murdering, so I don't really worry about that. You know what I mean? I don't steal. I, at least I hope I, I don't want to, you know, so I don't do it. So it doesn't worry about it. It doesn't cross my mind. So, you know, we live them. And if you live them, you, you know, the law is not, the law is for the lawless ones, you know, for the people who are against, you know, the law and it's to correct us so that when we're walking, we got that correction, you know? So um, that's really all I came to mind. I was just really, it was heavy on my heart, but I really wanted us all to continue to, to keep fighting that good fight, walking, you know, examining ourselves daily so that we know, you know, where we're, we're falling, you know, and where we need to lift each other up at and, you know, ask, ask each other, man, let's come together always as brothers and sisters and, and reach to each other because you know I need you guys just like you know we all need each other. So, hey, uh, shalom to all y'all. I love everybody. Thank you again, man, brothers. I'll be here. I'm here. <laughs> Peace, though. Hallelujah. I always appreciate your words, brother, and uh, that smile all the time. But uh, you're right. Uh, we have to dig into these words and pull them apart, find out what they really mean, because most people have a preconceived notion of what a word might mean. And as you see, I, I try, there's certain words, I'll just try to find out what is it they're saying so we can get a better understanding because there's a lot of misunderstanding I had about words until I went, like you just said, and go see what they actually mean. What does a strong say? What is the definition? Uh, what is the root words of these things? Then we get a better understanding of what's really being said here. Um, and, uh, I thank you for, for pointing that out because that's an important point. Just like the word Torah, you know, there's so much deeper there. Um, instructions, guidelines, teachings, law, you know, I mean, all of these things put together is what that word really means. But people want to take out and, and make it seem something that they teach it to mean that really is kind of off base. And it, it really does uh, cause confusion. Uh, and people to want to not do a void, you know, and uh, we really should be embracing this as, as an idea of how we got to live, you know, because if we get outside of that, we're in danger, in my opinion, you know, uh, and I, I want my prayers to be heard. I don't know about you, but, you know, that's my goal is to live according to his will. I pray that all the time. And that's another one of those words. What is his will? What, what does that mean? You know, people say it, but what is it? You know? I mean, if you if you don't know what it is, then how in the heck can you achieve it, you know? And uh, so I appreciate that. It, it points out something important that we all should do when we study, is really break these scriptures down uh, word for word. If we don't understand what they are saying, we better dig into them. Let's see what it is saying to us and get our Western mindset out of the way, you know? Uh, because that really causes us a lot of problems because we are taught certain things in this way of walking, in this new age of life, if you will, that we miss really what was being said back then. So I appreciate your words, brother. Thank you again. All righty, Dr. Pepper, I know, I know you got, you got some wisdom for us, don't you? Shabbat Shalom, by the way. 
I like your glasses. Oh, well, they kind of take the, the glare off of this LED screen I'm looking at. So that's basically all they do. <laughs> but uh, yeah, been, so, yeah, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. And uh, yeah, very, uh, yeah, once again, uh, very meaty word. Um, yeah, I feel like I had like a 32 ounce steak just now. It's, uh, yeah, a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of, uh, I didn't even need to eat one sauce. It was so good. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I was, I was just thinking about, yeah, to, uh, to what is it? Yeah, yeah, like you said, what does it mean to love, to love uh, Yahuwah? And it's like, uh, Yahusha said, if you love me, you would keep my commandments. And, uh, and it, it's like, when I was growing up, I remember growing up in churches and stuff, and it's like, it's just, yeah, the same old thing. It's like, oh, if you keep the law, you're condemned to uphold the whole law and everything like that. But when I started to really, when Yahuwah started revealing this to me a few, uh, several, about six months now, it's like, no, it's like really the, the, the Torah is his, his love. And uh, I didn't ask you. Oh. Yeah, the Torah, the Torah is, 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 is his love and everything. And, uh, and I was telling, uh, I remember talking to my dad about the, like, the dietary laws and stuff. And it's like, we, we really look into why these foods were not clean. It's because of what the animals do. It's like they're the cleanup crew and everything. They eat like the scavengers, eat dead stuff and all that kind of stuff. And, and then, yeah, it's like an act of love. And, uh, and, and when you see people, like a lot of people in America, and even in the church, you know, people are suffering so many conditions in their body and stuff. It's like, when you look at your diet and everything, it's like you're eating unclean, abominable foods. And yeah, you're going to suffer high blood pressure and high cholesterol and obesity and the whole nine yards and all that. So yeah, it's, um, it, yeah, it's, uh, and it's not really... For me, it's like some people like they say, well, there's like over 600 laws in the in the Torah, and it's like how can you keep up with all those laws and everything? But when you, I think, uh, yeah, Yahusha summarized it. I think you mentioned it earlier, where it says uh, to love the Lord that God. I mean, uh, to love Yahuwah with all your heart and soul and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. These these on um, these two commandments hangs the whole hangs the whole Torah. And um, so, yeah, that's, um, yeah, that's like, it makes it like, sim it basically summarizes it, make it nice and simple. Um, but uh, yeah, I was just like, I was just thinking about like uh, uh, that verse where it talks about um, search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. I think that's uh, John 5, chapter 5, verse 39 through 37, you know. Yeah, it's like it's one of those things where people um, we're living in a uh, extraordinary time because Yahoo is revealing his truth to his his remnant, and what's what's dangerous about it is people once Yahoo reviews his truth to you, it's like when you reject it, you're putting yourself in a bad situation. Like I think like Yahoo will like sort of wink at you like if you're in it, if you're still living in ignorance, but once uh once Yahoo reveals his his the truth to you, it's like you, if you reject it at that point, it's like, is there any more sacrifice left for you? It's like, it's, it's a dangerous situation, but, um, but yeah, it's, uh, I was just thinking about, uh, I remember when I was a, little, uh, a teenager, I thought about that scripture, uh, where the, uh, it's the judgment day and Yahuwah said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I know you not. And I was like, what does it, does it mean that Yahuwah doesn't know you? It's like, he created me and all that stuff, and he's going to tell me he doesn't know me. And and so, yeah, when you, talking about this today, when you uh, uh, talk about what it means to love Yahuwah, and uh, it's like, it's like that's really what it he means to know him, to know him in, in Ruach and in truth. And um so yeah, that's all I had to add. The rig, and once again, very very meaty message, and uh, uh, yeah, I appreciate you and, uh, and all your work every every week like that, coming with all this, all this, uh, all these uh, teachings and everything and, and all that. Because I know, yeah, you have a job like the rest of us. So I, I, I appreciate the time and energy you do 
every week like this, bringing forth this 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 word is definitely edifying to me. And uh, so I'll give it back to you, Rick. Well, well, thank you, brother. I appreciate that, and I guess that's what I'm called to do. You know, I feel that I'm driven. He keeps giving me stuff. I can't ignore it, so I got to go figure out what he's talking about. And I guess that means uh, having to deliver that message to, to those that want to hear it too. So I appreciate all your words of wisdom for sure because uh, you're seeing things clearly. As, as short of a period of time as you've been walking this, he was uh, opening you up and he's really pouring himself into you. And I see a lot of transformation that's taken place since uh, we've met. So uh, I'm glad that I've uh, been able to be part of that for you and with you. And believe me, I learn every single week when I dig into this stuff. It, it really shocks me what I learn sometimes and how different it is than what I thought. But I guess when you go into these things and you don't go in with a preconceived notion of what it's going to say, you learn something. So. Yeah, it's it's a blessing for me because I I do a lot of a lot of uh, research research and studying to various topics and um it's a uh, you guys are a challenge to me because y'all are you're the first group I encountered that knows way more than I do so I'm learning I'm learning a lot myself and I still have a ways to go and everything so we all do brother <laughs> never stop growing we all keep pursuing him and his his reward which is knowing who he is and his word. You know, and the more we dig into it, we meditate on it day and night, the more we're going to, our understanding is going to be transformed. And man, we're shocked. I'm shocked all the time. I'm humbled by what I learn sometimes. And this is another one of those things. And you know, I try to capture best I can what I'm getting. And you guys fill in the blanks where I miss it. So I appreciate that, this discussions and stuff, because it makes it so much better and deeper. Because yeah. you all get to speak and, uh, allow the Ruach to speak through you, and he teaches us that way. So I appreciate you, brother. Hallelujah. Um, I'm sorry? Do y'all hear me? Yeah, who's speaking? Was that Artis? Was that Artis? Yes, how you doing? You see me? Right. You're a little choppy, but we're doing good here. Good to have you this morning. All right, that, yeah, that's what I'm trying to make sure that I'm not so choppy right now because I think I'm having like low video quality right now at the moment. Go ahead and turn your video off. Hear me perfect. Turn your video off and then we probably will help. It usually does. All right, is that helping? Yeah, that's a little better. A little better? Yes, go ahead. All right, uh, first, first and foremost, look, I'm happy to see that it's a um, everybody's coming together and trying to get this truth. You know that's 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 good to see that the everything that's put, that the uh, word is talking about is actually playing out in these last days. And mm. you know I love that. I love that. You know because if it goes by the word, then yeah, you my brother. And um, y'all are y'all are all making good points. Y'all are all making good points. You know that's piquing your interest and. That right there is, you know, showing that you have faith, you're ready to walk and do accordingly to what the word is saying. And that, you know, in itself is showing love. And when it talks about the fulfillment of love, like love your brother as thyself and keeping the father's commandments, then it is, it is, it is, it's just summing it up. But on the other side of that, to getting, to getting the full understanding of the law, is breaking down every portion of it, breaking down every portion of the law, because there's certain aspects in people's lives that you know you can you can say uh, keep the commandments, keep the commandments, but what does it profit you if you're not teaching somebody how to keep a certain commandment? Because there's certain aspects in people's lives that people go through that they need to hear that breakdown, and and you know I love that we're getting there. Did we lose you? Like everybody's froze. Yeah. All right, I think I think we lost him there. So uh, I'll go ahead and uh, when you come back, uh, we'll we'll let you finish your thought there. 
Uh, let me move on to who has her hands up here for a little bit. Uh, I see Candace uh, has had her hand up, and she got something she wants to say, and so does her little one. <laughs> Yeah, bear with me. He definitely has something he wants to say. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Um, I came in a little late, so I just had two questions. Um, from what I heard, it sounds like we're we're right where I am in my personal study too. And so the one question was just something I had come across. Um, I don't know if it was last night or this morning, um, but so right now like i just came into the truth maybe really a few months ago that i started realizing that you know we're supposed to be i, I learned the names about last summer and then it's just recently that I, I started to realize how important um it is that we keep torah and um so the one verse that i read last night from galatians three fourteen. now i'm reading from like several different bibles that i've like acquired through the the last like eight years or however long it was that I've been a Christian. Um, and it was pointed out to me that, um, yeah, Galatians 3.12 is actually where it is. It says, yet the law is not of faith. And someone had said that that's blasphemy. And so I'm looking in all these different translations to try and see, you know, is it said any different in any other one? And I guess in the NIV, it says, I don't have that one in front of me, but it says the law is not something like a faith alone or based on faith, I think is what it says, which is the way I would have interpreted it anyway. I don't interpret the law as a curse, um, but that is the heading in this Bible. This is the New King James. It says the law brings a curse. And I guess Christ has redeemed us from the curse law. It does say that. So I guess I just wondered if anyone else's Bible says something different and what Bibles y'all are reading because I want to get like a paper copy of one that is a is a good translation, even though I do trust that the Ruach is going to help me interpret these things. And even if the wording is a little off, obviously, like faith will produce us in, will produce like a desire to keep the law in us, right? If is my understanding and is how I would have taken it. Um, I don't know. I just thought I'd throw that in there because it seemed like it was kind of on topic with what was being spoken today. And, uh, and then my other thing was just, I wondered if you had something on your website with the message that you had, like, usually you have like a write up of what you're speaking. Do you have that for today? Cause I'd like to, to get to all that meat that I'm hearing about and missed. Oh yeah. What was that scripture again? Galatians what? Galatians 3.12. It says, and the Torah is not of belief, but the man who does them shall live by them. Is that what the one you're talking about? Yeah, like, I mean, to me, that doesn't seem like it's, it, it does, I, I understand the difference, of, the difference between the law as it was given and then us having faith because we're not justified by keeping the law, yet keeping the law is a product of faith. So I don't know, to me, it didn't seem contradictory, but somebody that I had been speaking to said that that's blasphemy to call the law a curse and that all these Bible translations, so I've been reading the TS 2009, um, and and I was going to be purchasing the, the Hallelujah scriptures, and then I was looking at the that Basora of Yahusha and Sarim version as well. Um, and I don't know, I guess it just got me concerned. Like, I don't want to buy a Bible that's saying things that are, are not right. But I think that the translation, like it's been said, it, it can only go so far in the English language and we kind of have to look for the deeper meaning, right? Like, I, I don't, yeah. Yeah. Well, I will say that the, the Torah does bring a curse if you don't obey it. Um, yeah. You know, and that's really, I think, what it's saying there is if you're not obeying and not walking according to it, then the curse that, 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 uh, that the Torah or the law, if you will, brings shall be upon you. So I think that's more what it's saying, uh, yeah. that we are to walk by Amuna or faith, if you will. And uh, it's not that we're justified by keeping the Torah. Uh, it doesn't, but it does help keep us in that state of righteousness if we're walking right by it. 
So, yes. you know, it's, it's, that's, that's instructions, that's that guidance that it's giving us of how we ought to walk and live. So they're walking according to you who is will. And we're avoiding falling into the pitfalls of what the curse uh, that the Torah brings will bring upon you if you're not, you know. Um, and I think it's really hard to understand unless you understand what the Torah is and what it represents and what it does for us. Uh, we don't keep the Torah to become saved, but we keep the Torah because we are, you know, yeah. and that's what keeps us walking in the right way before him. That's the, so we walk according to the ways that you and Yahushua outline for us. And that's really what the, it is. It's uh, those instructions that tell us don't walk this way because uh, the judgment will come upon you. And that's the law that Rod was pointing out, the law yeah. aspect of this instruction. So uh, Rod has his hand up. I guess he wants to add to this. Go ahead, Rod. Yeah, Candice. Um, that particular passage, Shaul is, uh, first of all, that's used a lot by people to try to throw you off of, you know, keeping Torah. Yeah. But that particular passage, Paul is, uh, Shaul is speaking to people who were placing the Torah as a prerequisite before getting salvation. Right. So he's not, he's not saying that, that the Torah is not good. What he is saying is that the Torah is good. Salvation comes through faith. You know, we believe and keeping Torah is a natural response to us having faith in Yah. Our heart automatically desires and yearns to keep Torah because that's what he tells us to do. If you love me, you will keep my commands. My wife said she's trying to chime in from the side here. Uh, but um, uh, the brothers on Wednesday nights are going through the book of Galatians verse by verse. So if you go on the uh, devoted to Yah, you'll see all, you know, all your brothers here, did it, did it, all the faces here, we're chopping Galatians up, we're dispelling bad teaching, we're dispelling false teaching, we're teaching it in truth. And, um, you know, that's what Yah wants us to do. So you gotta know, you know, when, when people pull passages out like that, you have to know the context in, in which the letter was directed and why he was saying the things that he was saying. So to, to look at that and say that the, 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 the Torah is not good is a bad representation of what y'all saying there. And I okay. know Zion, Brother Mike, got something to say to that. You understand that, sis? I do, yeah. Thank you very much. And so I can I can get those videos on YouTube on D's page of yeah, you guys. The, yeah, devoted to Yah. Uh, we got, we we're in we're in chapter five now, but we've gone from chapter one up to chapter five. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You you're muted, Rick. Yeah, Rick, you're muted. Sorry about that. I clicked a button and the old screen went and I couldn't see nothing. Now I'm back. All right. All right, go ahead, Brother Mike. I, I know you had something you wanted to add, so go ahead and... Yeah. Uh, um, I think, uh, again, uh, the... The big focal point of all of uh, Bereshit, the New Testament, is is unveiling, um, you know, Melchizedek, which is righteousness. And uh, you see, that's what Yahushua talks about, again, fulfilling as, and I'm not going to get into the whole Melchizedek thing, but I'm just, you know, to answer her question, I'm going to give her scriptures to, to back this up, is the um, what he's showing is the importance of righteousness, which again, this is the same person that tells us that we that we need to seek the righteous requirement of Torah, and all he's saying is that righteousness, um, faith is of righteousness. Uh, we have Abraham. It says that because of his uh, uh, Yah saw he had faith, and he and he considered it as righteousness. It was faith that led to, that that was considered righteous. 
And and to, to back that up, you have Galatians two twenty one where he says, "I do not uh, I do not set aside the grace of Yahuwah, for if righteousness comes through the law, um, uh, through the law, Yahusha died in vain." Also, you have um, hold on, you have Romans three twenty one. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of Yahuwah has been made known to to which the law of the prophets testify. So aside from the law, so it's just saying that faith. Uh, faith, which, which is righteousness, um, doesn't come from the law. So not to say that we don't need to keep the law, because but all all it's saying is like like Brother Rod said, it's not the prerequisite. The law is not the prerequisite. Faith is the prerequisite, and the faith is what allows you to actually keep the law in your heart, which is the which is the goal. So yeah, if, if that helps, sister. I love you, brother. <laughs> Oh, well put. I appreciate that. Uh, you are I'm so studying hard. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, that's that's what the beauty of this format is because everybody gets to answer questions and the ruach gets to flow and word gets spewed out and clarification comes. And that's what this is all about. Hallelujah. All right, I'm going to go here down to, um, let's see, who we got here? We can move to next. We got Joan got her hand up. Let me go ahead and get to Joan so she can answer some questions. Go ahead, Joan. Well, no, not really answer questions, but just to let you know that while you were teaching, it was just so anointed. And I just thank Yah for you bringing forth that with, I mean, with all your heart like that. It was, it was anointing. And I, 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 just felt the yokes just breaking off and I felt just the power to be able to share, you know, what you were saying. And, and I know from the places that I've been, from the churches that I were in, yes, yes, they did. They say, oh, we like the law was bondage to us. And the way you shared it, it just opened up so much stuff. And I mean, you know, it's like you know it, but when you hear it under the anointing like that, it just breaks yokes, and I'm just praising y'all over here. I was just so anxious just to raise my hand and and just give y'all praise. You know, he he put a, a a trumpet inside of me, and if I don't get off this phone, it's gonna it's gonna sound off. So I'm gonna just let you guys go. Uh, my my grandbaby is home from the summer vacation, so I'm gonna spend some time with him today. I just want to say Shabbat Shalom to everybody. Thank you, Joan. Appreciate Shabbat you. Shalom. Shabbat Shalom to you too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I appreciate you and your words of encouragement. And yes, this was, uh, I was feeling it this morning, uh, actually all week as I was going through this. And but today you hit me hard, as I'm sure you heard, but uh, uh, broke me down a little yes. bit. Um, yes, it was so good. So good. Barack, you and your family. Thank you. Thank you, Joan. Appreciate you very much. Alrighty. Hallelujah. And uh, Candace uh, uh, and anybody else, I just put the link up uh, through the website that all of these studies are put up on the PDF so you can go through them uh, and pull them apart as you will. Um, so I record these videos and I also put the, the studies up there. So anything that you're looking for is on the discipling section of Yahuwah Kingdom. All right, Stacy, are you there with us? I don't know. Where did he go? I don't see him now. Uh, 443, I think that is uh, uh, <laughs> Avon. Is that you? April? Yes. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. That's us. <laughs> um, this lesson was, it was really great. My first response is just, you know, hallelujah, hallelujah. Um, I've been out of the church for about three years now and Torah means more to me today than it did of course when I first came out but the more I studied the more I learned his instructions and statutes mean so much more to me and the first the first reaction for me is it's just so humbling because not only does it tell us what 
what is Yah's word for us? It, it shows us where we did wrong and all of our thinking. So I know when some people, when they come out of the church and they get into this, you know, they just jump right in. They love Torah. They, they want to dig in. But for me, it took some time because I was a good Christian. You know, I was a faithful, good, tithe paying from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Christian, you know, in church. So it took some time for, for Torah to, to get, for me to let go of my pride and let go of all that I thought I knew was right, you know? So now, at even this lesson, it just brought to me a humbling Toda Rabba Yahuwah. Thank you for letting, for showing me who you are and just being obedient. Because I think if, if I just, if I was just to go by what I knew and what I thought, I would never have, 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 have wanted to know what was in Torah, you know, because of that pride. But as, as I was just obedient, like you said in the study, like, you know, just as a child, just do what he tells you to do. Just follow me in obedience, and he will he will show us, he will bring us that love. And it, it just, this lesson just reminded me of what Torah can do and how far Yah has brought me. So, again, hallelujah. Thank you, Rick. You know, thank you, everybody, because uh, even the other gentlemen that said stuff and, you know, pointed out things, it's always good to learn. I'm always learning. So, toda. Toda. Um, Avon has stepped away, but he feels the same way too. So. <laughs> well, I appreciate you, April. Uh, again, more more clarification on how these kinds of studies are really do open our eyes to things that we really had a, a wrong understanding and comprehension of. And uh, I, I love these type of things. I love to hear your feedback. I love to hear. Uh, things that you have to share that bring more clarity and understanding. So I just appreciate all of you for sure. Uh, Susie, uh, anything you'd like to share this morning? Good morning. This morning. Um, no, I really enjoyed the the teaching today, and um, yeah, I learned a lot. Thank you. Good. I'm glad you learned a lot. That's the point of all of this. Uh, so we gain better, deeper, uh, wider understanding of things. So appreciate you. Shabbat shalom. Thank you. Shabbat shalom. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off in the middle of your Shabbat shalom. So. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Shabbat shalom to everyone. You too. All righty. Uh, Carter, got your hand back up again. Let me go back to you see what you got for us. Oh, and I think you're still muted. There you go. Um, I'm not sure. I don't know all names at this point, but somebody had brought something up that made me think about this. Uh, while the Torah is not a prerequisite for uh, salvation, one of the one one of the things that got us started down this whole path was Hebrews, where it says, "Uh." For if we purposely sin after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer remains a slaughter offering for sins. This is after the Messiah, so obviously he's talking about this offering as well. Uh, and we know by 1 John 3, 4, that sin is transgression of the Torah. And that's what got us started down this whole ground. Uh, take the dietary laws, for instance. Everybody now is coming out and... and how unhealthy it is, and maybe this is why the Bible says, in all honesty, I didn't start putting on weight till after I put down the pork. So really, whether or not it is unhealthy, I'm not That's because I started cooking. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure. At the end of the day, the father, he's big, I'm little. He said, don't eat it, I don't eat it, and it's, it's simple as that. Yeah, and I wanted to add um, to Candace, um, everybody learns a little differently, but for us, we had to kind of put down the New Testament for like an entire year just to try to understand the foundation of Torah. And once we were able to do that, then we could get back into the New Testament and apply Torah to it first. 
to really understand the, the basis of it and to understand where it comes in in the New Testament, which is a lot. And I never knew that unless I would have known, you know, try to understand the Torah first. Um, but it talks about in uh, Deuteronomy 30 that um, if you choose to follow the commands, you choose life. <laughs> I mean, that's such a big deal. I mean, he gives you an option of life or death. And when you choose it, you're, you're choosing to live. And so I just, I wanted to add that for, from your study because I really, I mean, Deuteronomy 30 is like such a big deal for me. And it also says that, you know, it's easy. It, it should be easy. None of this should be hard. Uh, yeah, Torah is, Torah is easy to follow. I mean, shepherds on the side of a mountain with no internet or Bible doing it. So we should be able to do it too. Yeah, it's easy. So um, with obedience, you know, comes the blessings, but it comes life. And, um, you know, we, we weren't Christians, you know, we weren't, we were completely secular. Like we, we were together. We had children. We weren't married. I mean, uh, not that that, you know, there was a lot of things that we didn't do that followed the Bible. And then, uh, so for us to, to follow now, you know, I mean, it's, it just feels a lot different for everything. It completely changed our lives. And, um, without Torah, we would have, we would have chose death pretty much. So, um, anyway, just wanted to throw that out there. Shabbat shalom. Nice to meet everybody. <laughs> wow, those are powerful words, and, I, and I'm in agreement with what you said. Uh, and it's awesome to, to hear your, I, I want to hear how you come through and, and all of those type of things, as we always do on air. Uh, but uh, uh, I guess you're kind of at an advantage in some ways because you didn't have all of the ickies of the religion on you. Uh, <laughs> and to go into the Torah first, Wow. You know, uh, commendable because you're exactly right. How can you, how can you think that you can even follow this or walk according to this if you don't know the foundation? And that's really, I believe, what Yahushua was saying. You know, if you build your house on that rock, which is the Torah and Yahushua, of course, uh, then it's going to stand strong. Your faith, and then you can start to understand what the New Testament is saying. If you do it the other way, that's why they're all messed up. They have no clue what the Torah says because they've gotten rid of it all other than the tithes and all the things that they, they want to use. It's like cherry picking what they use, but uh, yes. Uh, and according to what you said about the pork, oh yeah, that is when things change. And the understanding of why, I think uh, was a brother Brian or uh, Jay's talked about that. If you understand why we're not, the father is so good to us. He says, don't eat these things not because he doesn't want you to enjoy them. It's because they're poison. If you understand a pig, it can't get rid of toxins in his body. So everything that it digests, it stays in there, stored in the fat of the pig. Not only does it have viruses and worms, many, I think there's 14 different types of worms it has. Um, but there's so many parasites and things that will make you sick. And I think it was Brian who said, you know, that's why all these people are sick because they're eating things that are not supposed to eat that make their bodies get sick. Did I, I think I um, see you saying Also, something. yeah, in Galatians, um, Candace, if you just start at the beginning of the chapter, sometimes that'll just put it in perspective. Because, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, first he's talking to, to the Galatians, uh, which the whole other set of people. But, it, I mean, it kind of just explains itself sometimes when you just start at the beginning of the chapter instead of just go straight to the verse. I agree. Read before and after and you usually get a pretty good understanding of the context. Uh, and, uh, yeah. and also, uh, go ahead, Mike. We'll get you first and then uh, Rod right. can, can add. Alright, just, just real quick. Just, just also keep in mind Okay, baby. Sorry. Also, just keep in mind, too, even though he was going to Gentile nations, it wasn't only Gentiles Paul talked to. He talked to the Jews first and then um, the Gentiles because there was the, the, the scattered that were in those nations. And those those were the first ones that he talked to, it says, and then to the Gentile. So um, I don't believe he's telling Gen Gentiles specifically at that point about um, Torah because they don't actually know the Torah. They don't they weren't raised with Torah. 
I believe he was actually talking to the Jews who were scattered in those nations first. You know what I'm saying? So keeping that in mind that it's not all Gentiles he's talking to. He was called to go to Gentile nations, but even the Jews in those nations, they would call Gentiles because they lived in Gentile nations. The, the Jews would call them that. So keeping that in mind too. I don't call them Jews, but I know what you're trying to say. <laughs> Rod, Jew -ish, you just, Jew -ish. I like Hebrew. Jewish is ugh. Go ahead, Rod, what you got? Yeah, no, nah, I was just trying to make sure that we were making a clear distinction of following Torah and understanding what Galatians is saying. You know, it's different when you're coming new to Torah or new to the faith and someone saying, if you don't do these things, you're not saved, or this will lead you to be to salvation versus it coming by faith and following Torah is what we're supposed to do. There's a difference there. And I think that's the distinction we were trying to make. So that we're not saying that following Torah is not a good thing. It's the greatest thing for us here that believe. But you got to understand that people try to use these specifically in the church to try to teach away from it. So we have to know how to defend it in the sense that we understand what Shaul was saying here because Shaul is often quoted as speaking against Torah when actually he's speaking for it. And it's misunderstood, it's, mis it's misinterpreted. That's why Peter says, you know, Shaul's letters are, are misunderstood <clears throat> to the detriment of those who are unlearned because they don't understand what he's saying. So I just wanted to make that distinction so that people don't think, you know, when we say the Torah was a prerequisite, we're speaking of those who were teaching that that Shaul was talking against. But for us, it follow Torah, it is a great thing. It is life. It is our life. It is the Messiah, the word. Amen. So I just wanted to make that clear. You know what I mean? Because, you know, we can get tricky with the thoughts and what the word is saying and Torah versus what Galatians is saying and Shaul and the word and the Old Testament and New Testament. That needs to be clear. That's all I just wanted to make sure. Very good point. Thank you for bringing that clarity. William, you got something you wanted to answer? Yeah, how y'all doing? Shalom, shalom. Shabbat shalom. Um, I wanted to speak to the Carters. Um, just uh, the steps and the things that you're bringing up reminds me of the things that I'm actually going through right now. And uh, <sighs> the best advice I can give is uh, coming new to taking this extra step to get into the realities of what it's really all about um, is to move very slow with it. Don't rush through it. It's a day to by day, knowing when to put it on pause and absorb and really trying to understand what you're trying to understand and just put it on pause for a minute. That helps me uh, grasp what, uh, the brothers that are more advanced and the sisters here uh, in Torah teachings. Uh, so I'm able to absorb more that way when I move a little slower. Um, you look, look, talking to a guy that's been in for my whole 51 years, I've been taught all these perversions and so many, so much stuff that I still have to get out of my mind. Uh, just to crack a little joke, a little bit on the humorous side here, uh, I pulled up to a McDonald's the other day, uh, and I forgot. I ordered me a sausage, egg, and biscuit, okay? And I opened the thing up, and I see the pig laying there. You want to talk about a battle. So I'm, me and this thing is looking at each other, and we're talking to each other, okay? It was like the serpent, you know? and. Uh, so I ripped this thing out. Thank you, Yahuwah. He gave me the strength to say no. I ripped it out, gave it to the birds. Might have had a little flavor in me, but, uh, you know, I let it go. And, uh, but one of the things that I'm learning is uh, it, it, it's, it's, 
it's, it's shocking to the spirit for me to actually get this deep into the word because everything's been New Testament based up to this point. Oh, we don't need to do that, this and that and the other. Well, I just went by what, you know, like normally all of us go by is what we've been taught since we were kids, growing up or whatever the case may be. So, you know, I'm, 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 I'm learning to fit the puzzles better. All this information that I'm coming into through the worship here between the men's group on Wednesdays and now that, uh, you know, it, you got to hang in there. It falls in place. It really does. When your heart and you're working with the Ruach, it's, it's a constant battle all week long for all of us. But as the weeks progress, the puzzles, they start to fall in place. So I'm actually to the point where I'm seeing where the New Testament, uh, how should I put this? Where the New Testament is rooted from the Old Testament. So you get to kind of fit it in. And the Apostle Paul, yeah, he's very controversial. It throws me for a loop. We talk a lot about him here. <sighs> Sometimes I just got to stop and I got to either ask the brothers, hey, what do you, how do you feel about this line, this first, this, that, and the other? Because Paul, forget it. That's an animal of his own kind there. But the more and more uh, we, we go over this stuff, I, me personally, uh, Thing, things to start. I'm starting to learn the characters better um, throughout the Bible. You know, um, it, it's just it's it's a slow thing. Just gotta take it slow on a daily basis, and 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 that's the best recommendation. I don't want to take too much time here, but uh, that's the only advice. You know, from an old head here, uh, 51 years of perverted scriptures, twisted. I'm having to get out of my mind here. So you guys are young. You'll be all right. Just uh, one day at a time. Go down. Well, I appreciate those. And uh, I got you beat. I'm at 53. So uh, yes, sir. it, it does, uh, does the mind good when you start to get some clarity about all this stuff. Uh, I'm always humble for sure. But I do got to ask, I asked you a question. What did that thing say to you? You said it was talking to you, man. <laughs> oh, man. That thing? <laughs> I'll tell you, what wasn't it saying to me? <laughs> it was exactly. saying all sorts of things. I had, I had withdrawals <laughs> myself like, when you know, I stopped eating that pork. I wanted to get a pizza with sausage and pepperoni and all that stuff. It was saying everything, man. I mean, the other day, went to Walmart, picked up a pizza from the cooler, never even thought about it. Come home with pepperoni on it. It gets in in little waves, you know? Everything. So, you, I, it's not pizza without pepperoni. I found that you can't go to McDonald's. It's all pork except for maybe one thing. It's beef. But, I mean, you can't get pizza hardly without pepper, uh, without pork on it. You, know? you can't go to no drive-thru restaurant without – I never. you never realize till now when you start to make the transformation – how much pork, you just can't get away with it. Man. The only thing I can get at McDonald's is a steak, egg, and cheese biscuit. That's it. And, and, <laughs> and every commercial, every commercial, the Baconator, the add bacon on, you know, the, you, watch, you try to watch a chef show, throw some bacon on it. It'll make it better. You know, it's just, it's just <laughs> like in your face all the time. Pork shoulder, you know, man. You right yeah. now. I wouldn't trust their steak, egg, and cheese either, though, because their steak isn't all steak. Right. Just, just like you go buy a steak at the store, it could be mostly steak with pieces of, <clears throat> pieces of pork glued to it using meat glue. Well, in that case, I, you know, I guess I don't read very well all the time. But the, we, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. You just yeah, it's, like a, it's like going through a detox, detox uh, process. Because I, I was like that back in February. I stopped eating pork, and I had like withdrawal symptoms and. Everything. Like I wanted to eat, eat get some skid all that stuff, and I was like, no, I'm I'm done with that stuff. But uh, that, that, I'm sorry, did I hear someone say Dr. Pepperoni? <laughs> <laughs> well, you like that pepperoni and bacon? You, they got turkey versions now, not quite the same, but that's right. But they do uh, satisfy a little bit, I guess. 
<laughs> yeah, my wife just discovered the uh, the pepperoni. They sell the pepperoni in Turkey, where you can put it, put on 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 the pizza yourself there. Yeah, that's what we do when we're gonna have pizza. Cause, man, that's a hard one there. We want to get away from that pork for sure, cause it's everywhere for sure. Alrighty, thank you all for that input. I, man, this is getting really deep here. I think uh, we start pulling more and more of these layers back. I see that uh, JP, you got your hand back up again. What, what you want to add, friend? Uh, you know, I just want everybody to you know keep on fighting the good fight. You know, and remember, you know, I was looking at this verse. I know that it's not uh, – well, I mean, I use it, though, to be correlated of 1 Corinthians 14.33, for Elohim is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all assemblies of the saints. But I was thinking about that, and I say, you know, a lot of times we're, we're, we're getting in conversations with other people, and we got to remember it's not so much them, but them demons and principalities and, you know, those evil spirits. You know, so sometimes our brothers and sisters that are, you know, still, you know, maybe walking in a walk that we're not walking today, but we once were, you know, they, they might say things that they don't even know, you know, they're not really meaning or something. And so I was just thinking about that as we were all talking, you know, when we speak to others, we got to remember, you know, we're, we're fighting against the, them, them demons, man, them spirit, those evil spirits and, you know. So I just want to, you know, wish everybody or tell everybody, hey, keep walking and fighting that good fight, especially when we're speaking to our brothers and sisters that are in that other walk and get them onto this and let them understand that uh, some of these things that they've been embedded with, indoctrinated with, of course, you know, it's not the truth, but but it's not always them, you know. So we know that who the author of confusion is and Hey, shalom to all my people. I love you all, man. I just want to say that. It was, it was heavy on my heart. I just want to say that. All right, brothers, peace. I, th I think you just revealed what it was. It was talking to Will. That was that, that pork sandwich uh, demon that was speaking to him. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Kefa, I see your face. Uh, you got something you'd like to add? Well, shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. My brothers. Looking beautiful. Um, I know you guys are talking about bacon, right? Pork. Let me tell well, you what happened the other day, man. It was actually on the Torah, but it kind of went down to the pork trail. Y'all know what happened, man. Sorry. I was about to buy some potato soup the other day. <laughs> you guys heard of this store called Pop, this store called Pop Belly? A restaurant called Pop Belly. I was about to get, yeah, you heard of it, right? <laughs> So I was going to get some potato soup, right? And I'm like, yo, I want some potato soup. Like, yo, what's up? Mm, you know? So I asked them, you know what? I want, I want some potato soup. And they told me, okay, I'm going to give you some potato soup. And so as soon as I went to get, you know, I was about to eat the potato soup, there was bacon in it, man. <laughs> I was so upset, man. I was just, you told me there was potato soup. You didn't tell me it was bacon in there, bits of bacon. And I was so upset because I put it in my mouth, mm. you know? And I was just really discouraged, man, that day, you know what I'm saying? It really messed up my day because, I mean, I'm trying to, you know, I stay away from bacon, you know what I'm saying? So it was really discouraging because I was like, yeah, you know my heart, I wasn't trying to eat this pork thing, you know what I'm saying? And um, so, but I mean, I had to let it go, man, but it was, one, it, it was like I was tempted to dwell in my heart with it. Like, man, really destroyed my day with it, you know what I'm saying? But um. It was really discouraging, but I was like, you know what, let me keep on moving. Let me not, let me not, not take that, you know, it's taking me out of, out of the day of, of really trying this bacon thing, you know what I'm saying? So, but it was really upsetting. It was really upsetting. You know what I mean? I understand. And that is a big foundation, too, of, uh, of the Torah, you know? I mean, it is, uh, it was given to us to keep us healthy, you know, uh, to keep us away from the things that will make us sick. You know, if you really look at all of those things that he told us don't touch and don't eat, there's a good reason for each one of them. You know, we don't understand it because it's such a norm in this world. And quite honestly, that pork does taste pretty doggone good. Um, yeah, it's hard to get that out of you once you got it, you know. And, you know, when I first came to that knowledge, that was a hard one because, you know, I like pulled pork and I liked, uh, you know, bacon and all those things that tasted yummy. But, uh 
But then I started to understand what they were, and they started to become disgusting to me. And uh, I guess I got to avoid those things because the Father said it's not good and I shouldn't eat them. So uh, that's, that's right. the transformation that we walk in. So. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, Amen. Th thank you, uh, Brother Kef. I appreciate you. Thank you. All right. I see Patricia's got her hand up. What you got to add, uh, Patricia? I got you. Oh, you're good. Go ahead. I don't hear you, though. I see your mouth, your mouth moving. But Maybe that's you, why. Can you hear me now? Go. Yep. Okay. I had my outside speaker on. I guess it doesn't work with it. So, yeah, my internet just like died this morning, and then we just got back up a half an hour ago. So I didn't even get the teaching. But um, I am. I just wanted to say I'm super stoked to um, the Carters. I never met anybody um, that came into this that hadn't been had all so many years of brainwashing. And I think it's just going to be really exciting to walk along you side, uh, you guys with this. Um, be really neat. So that's all I wanted to say. That really kind of was stoked about that. Well, sorry you missed it, but you can go back and watch it. I uh, can. And, uh, I love that you do that. I love that you do that because I am slow. I can stop it and go at my own pace. Well, that's the beauty of it. Uh, do it at your pace, as uh, I believe it was William said. You know, you, you got to stop, sometimes stop and chew on some stuff because there's a lot of deep stuff here when we're walking here. And if you just keep reading, uh, you're, you're not going to get the full uh, full meal, I guess, if you will. And there ain't no pork involved in that one, so. <laughs> that's okay. I'm not, I was never into that anyways. <laughs> well, lucky you. Very good. Well, thank you. It's good to see you this morning. Shabbat shalom to you. And I know there had to been a little bit of panic when you can't get on the internet. Well, I got in and then it kicked me out like before the worship was done. So. Oh, bummer. So, yeah. Well, we're glad you're back. Good to see you. Bye. Alrighty. Uh, oh, we got the Carters with their hand back up. We got something else you'd like to say? Yeah, I just wanted to say, uh, well, first of all, um, Sister, uh, I just want to say that happens to us, too. I want to give everybody a warning. Sometimes our internet will just, and we'll be gone, but we'll be back. Um, the brother who was talking about the uh, the sausage biscuit thing, I know exactly how you feel. When we first started putting down the pork, I went to work and got something out the vending machine and ate half of it before I realized that I was eating it. So, you know, it had, now it makes us sick. It makes me sick if I see anybody else eating. It makes me pleasy. Yeah, I work um, in a Mexican restaurant, and, like, there's pork and shellfish all the time, and I can smell it. And when I walk by it, I'm just like, it, it makes me sick to my stomach now. But I wanted to say uh, about Paul, and Paul being controversial, this is just my own personal opinion, but I almost think that his letters were, wrote, were written that way intentionally uh, to kind of sift out the, the obedient from the disobedient, what I was think I've learned from trying to study for all this time is that scripture is almost kind of like a mirror. If you see disobedience and justification for your disobedience, if that's what's in your heart, that's what you're going to see when you read. If you have a heart of obedience, that's what you're going to see when you read. And I almost feel like Paul's letters were written in that way in order to test us and try us just like the Israelites were tried in the wilderness. That's all I want to say. That's an interesting thought. I never thought of it that way. Um, I wanted to add that um, growing up uh, here and there, I had some Pentecostal stuff going on. And then growing up, he was actually raised somewhat Jehovah Witness. Yeah, when I was a kid. So, You'd be surprised. <laughs> even that was years ago. I was like 12 when I stopped all that. And you'd be surprised. Even that long time ago, stuff still gets stuck back there. And you still have a little bit of that that you got to get rid of. So when we actually used to discuss the Bible, we would always butt heads because I'm like, well, I'm Pentecostal. I'm clearly right. And he's like, well, I'm right about everything. Yeah, anyway, so. Study more. <laughs> so, um, but I mean, clearly we didn't live any, a life of, can you stop please? Uh, we didn't live a good life. <laughs> um, according to Torah. And so actually we usually call that time BT, BTO before Torah observant. Um, but, um, it kind of when it was just very 
out of the blue one day. Um, he kind of, he was just looking into it. We were both looking for a, um, a way to be close to the father. And it was, it was very just kind of random, but we just both wanted it. And he looks at me and he goes, I think we're supposed to be keeping these commands. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and he was like, like following the Sabbath day and, and the um, feast days and not eating pork and following the laws. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> and then we just kind of jumped right into it and started keeping the Sabbath day. Um, we actually, the first feast day was Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur and that would be three years ago, this coming Yom Kippur. And then we stopped Christmas and all the, um, ho the holidays. And um, I don't want to say it was, it was easy, but it wasn't, it wasn't difficult. We didn't know what we were doing, <laughs> but we just wanted to be um, obedient. We just wanted to be close to the father. And it, it, it was like, that was the only way. So it kind of wasn't a question. But anyway. Sorry, <laughs> I get carried away. Hey, that's beautiful what you just said. No need to apologize. I mean, you said a lot, and and it's amazing to me that you heard and you responded so quickly without. I mean, that 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 that's how all of us were. I believe, and no matter where we were in our walks, whether we're in Christianity or we weren't, when that word came and we heard it. That tells me who you are. You know, what I mean, uh, and that should tell you who you are. Uh, he gave you an ear to hear his voice when you didn't even know him that well, you know. You heard about him, and then all of a sudden you got a desire to, to actually go and get rid of all of this stuff. Wow, come on. That don't happen uh, too often. Uh, some of us, it takes a little longer, a little more uh, of a journey to come to that knowledge. So you guys are pretty unique in that way. So bravo. Hallelujah. All right, I see that uh, we got a couple of hands. I'm going to go to June. I haven't heard from her yet this morning. Shabbat Shalom, June. Good morning. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Uh, you're a little bit faint. Can uh, you get a little closer to the mic, maybe? Oh. There you go. Let me see. Can you hear me better now? Yes, we can hear you good now. Okay. Uh, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Thank you very much for that word. It was it was good to be reminded of, you know, if we love Him, keep His commandments, and and that's a big one coming out of Christianity. But speaking of Torah, I would just want to make a quick public service <laughs> announcement for the women. There's a the same Zoom channel on Tuesdays at 7:30 p.m. Uh, they are uh, we're we're going through the tour. I actually wasn't in this past Tuesday night, but I hear from Sister Karen it was awesome. So I just wanted to put that out there uh, for anyone that wants to come and join us as we study that together. Hallelujah. Thank you for that announcement. I'm sure that you're going to have some more uh, people joining you now. I already see a smile on Carter's face. I don't know your name, so I, I can only call you Carter. So, but I think uh, she looked like she I'm was Lisa. Lisa. Nice to meet you. And your husband's name? Uh, we just call him Carter. Car okay, there you go. I got you, Carter. Good to have you guys this morning. Um, is there anything else, June, that you'd like to add, or is, is that all you wanted to say? Uh, I just to echo what everyone's saying about um, Yah's instruction about what to eat and not to eat. You know, you got to think about it. Like he actually created. Maybe there's an echo. Can you mute? That's me. I'm sorry. I learned. Uh, no, that was me. <laughs> We're like we both She's had sitting across. <laughs> she don't want to sit beside me. I don't know why. Let me uh. Let me mute myself. Yeah, because you know. Because <laughs> she wants her own microphone. I'm, I'm just yeah. joking, everybody. <laughs> All right. I don't want to infiltrate his space over there. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, so God created us. You know, he, he created Adam and Eve. Um, he created you, the, us, mankind, and he created the animals. And so, 
you know, he knows the inner workings of us, and he also knows the inner workings of every animal he created. So if the very person <laughs> who created me, who also created the animal, is telling me not to put that animal in me, then he must know something because <laughs> he's the one that designed the whole situation. And he designed the ocean, you know, and he knows, you know, the shrimp and the, um, you know, basically they're the garbage dis disposals of the earth, the shrimp and the pig and, and all these things. So um, to me, it, it, you know, when I thought of it in those terms, it was really easy to uh, embrace that, Father knows best. Abba Father knows best. And, you know, it's not, you know, um, it doesn't have to be like, it, it could be weird to us because the world is just in such disregard or, or not informed about his instructions. And so I just feel, you know, really blessed to even um, have an understanding of this truth, you know, because many people don't and like Rod was saying once once you know we began to get our diet straight it was just like every other commercial <laughs> was bacon 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 and it was and I almost saw it like a mockery <clears throat> you know like it's like it was you know a way that um you know they're uh, a mockery of God's laws like a, a way that you know, it's kind of one way in to make us all, you know, uh, uh, eat these, you know, uh, abominations or, you know, have this abomination in God's sight. So that's all I had to say. Well, thank you, June. Very well put. And you made some very good points there. And I think your husband uh, uh, applauds you as well. <laughs> thank you. Take care. Uh, all right, Artisha, I see you're back with the with some beautiful children. Hey, yeah, I'm sorry about the I I actually lost signal and I had to call the Rodman because I'm using this like hot spot thing right now. So I had to get everything back straight. But it's off subject on what uh I was gonna make the valid point to and plus I got my scriptures and everything all out of order right now. So I'm sorry about that, y'all. Shalom. Uh, we'll make sure I have everything in order next time. Well, we're glad you're here, and the uh, order that you have is good to see you, you and your beautiful children. Shabbat shalom to you as well. All right, uh, Mr. Uh, Will Sr., I see your hand up. Go ahead and let you have uh, the floor again. All right. Can you hear me? Oh, okay. Uh, no, to the Carters, there's something they were talking about. I forgot to mention earlier. Um, two verses that really rocked my world as to my whole spiritual world. It's like my eyes are like, whoa, where am I here all of a sudden? Was Matthew 5, 17 and 1 John 3 and 4. I don't remember that, ever reading that. And when I came across those two verses right there, uh, that, that was the beginning of an eye opener for me to really start doing some more uh, research. What, what is that? What, what exactly? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. So that was like, it opened up a new rail on that train. And there was an opening right there for me to start really looking into, uh, you know, deeper scripture about, you know, a lot of things we're talking about here. But uh, just wanted to share those two verses there because that 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 was my turning point uh, from where I was at. Those two verses right there. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, sir. One thing I would want to um, want to add is um, when the when when the way the way Isaiah Isaiah twenty eight nine and ten. Uh, for one, because I was thinking about when he, when he was just talking, uh, Will Senior, I think, was all about the verses. So Matthew's 18 was one of them verses for me, right? Matthew's 18 and 3, where it says, uh, hold on, let me get to it. It's better to actually look at the verse than just try to paraphrase. 
Yeah, that's one of Brother D's favorite things. No paraphrasing. <laughs> Better to look at it. Um, so Matthew's 18. 18 and uh, 3. Which I think a lot of people know. It says, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye should not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So that was one of them verses that, you know, got to me about the laws and everything like that is what started me to want to look right back into it. Cause right over that. I got my children, y'all, please. <laughs> uh, right over that. It, um, at the beginning, it says, at the same time came the disciples, which is referenced also to students. Disciples are students under the teacher, our king, which is the Messiah. Uh, saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Yahushua called, called a little child unto him and set, and set him in the midst of them. And right there, he set them in, setting him, setting that little child in the midst of them. Uh, Yeshua was, hey, hey, I'm sorry. Yeshua was actually making a, making an example right there before he even spoke when he set the child in the midst of the students and him as the teacher and that's that's what we that's what we have in between us as people that uh, us that's um, learning and um at elders or you know mores uh, some of the teachers that's teaching which our king is the you know, ultimate teacher. So we're, we're diving into his word, keeping his testimony, right? And then he says, Verily I say unto you, you shall not become, you shall not be converted and and become as little, hold on. Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. And when you think about it, you think about the humbleness of a child. And that's what the ver uh, very next ver uh, verse is going to be talking about, the humbleness of a child, like, how humble is a child? They they don't know anything. They're they're just willing to learn any learn what you teach them. If you teach if you teach a child or uh, something for a full year, whether it's wrong or right, that's what they're gonna know. So us, we are already being grown into this word that we know what we learn from uh Christianity and everything, we already have preconceived thoughts, so to say, at the time. If you have a to here then you know you're converted you're converting back into his real his true word going back into sound doctrine i have to go ahead and sum this up right quick because uh my kids is uh getting me right now but basically humbling yourself as that child is what i had to do humble myself as that child because i've been in christianity for a long time and i felt like it was really nothing else that can be told to me and tell I started seeing how the laws was being broken down and that's really that really wasn't something that Christianity was actually teaching me. So I, I at first I thought it was just summed up to be something, you know, like okay, it's just all love and you know, they taught us about sin, but it was like if you sin, then you you know, go back keep asking for repentance. So I was still in my ignorance and that I was just saying that that's one of the verses that got me to actually start looking. I went back and started reading Torah over again and then started seeing things in a better perspective. Let me tell my kids right quick. I'm sorry, y'all. I need to make my environment a little bit better. All right. Well, thank you for your input. And uh, you made some good points there. Um, we do have to come as children. And children are moldable and shapeable. They're, they're, uh, they're willing to learn. Uh, from their father, uh, from their parents, I should say, but uh, in our case, from the father and the Mashiach, the, you know, they're showing us things, and if we just kind of turn away from it, we're kind of rejecting them in a, in a way, and we're not coming as little children to uh, humble and willing to, 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 to do whatever it is that pleases our parents, our, our father, you know, so thank you for those comments. All right, I'm going to go to... Uh, Let's see, one more, and, uh, and if there's no more hands, we're going to conclude this, this discussion. But Miranda, anything you'd like to add? Uh, yeah, um, I'm going to share this. I was in a camp house, and 
they had it on, they had the TV on religious programs, and this preacher was up there saying that because J.C. Uh, sacrificed himself for our sins and everything, that the Torah no longer applied. And I, I just, I was like, wow, that is what they are trying to teach the world. And so I, I'm glad for this study that, that points out that the Torah still does apply. It is just mind boggling that they have it so screwed up and so wrong. And I'm just glad to see that it's not you that got it screwed up and so wrong like that, because it is going to be people that's going to be in the midst of us dealing with them type of doctrines. It's you remember the, uh, the word says that people are going to be getting married off and uh, drink and uh, the harlot. They're going to drink the wine of her fornication. It's talking about them doctrines and stuff, being drunk of them type of doctrines. And, um, uh, to see that everybody is um, really willing to actually humble themselves enough to understand sound doctrine, it's you know it gives you discernment to know that you know hey, just don't listen because even Paul, even where they get that from, I can guarantee you a lot of the things that people try to combat, you know the actual truth with is the hard to be understood Paul's epistles, and even Paul himself said, "Shall we continue in sin?" that grace shall abound. And it says, God forbid. I can't see how that's not under understand, how you can't understand that. Isaiah 9 and 10 says, whom shall I teach knowledge? And whom shall I teach to understand? Them that are drawn from the milk and drawn and uh, brought from the breast. It must be precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. Now we notice he, he has the ten, tendency to repeat that. Then he says, line upon line. Line upon line, here a little and there a little. And then it tells you why he's doing, saying it like that, because it says, with stammering lips, will he speak to his people? Because the thing that was hard for us to do then was listen. We could not listen. And now, hearkening to my word, hear, O Israel, all the verses that's telling you to listen. The Messiah said it must be precept upon precept, Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. And that is the refreshing of the word. So, uh, yeah, I, I like the, um, what, the point that you brought out right there, ma'am, and the, the, the fact that you're not one of those. He says, my sheep hear my voice, and any one of the sheep that the Father gave to me, I will not lose. We may stumble sometimes. We may fall into situations where we get angry and we may even sin but he also says that we will not utterly be cast down and sometimes he will deliver your flesh to the devil for the destruction of your flesh in order to save your soul greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world get rid of the fleshly mind get back into that spirit shalom hallelujah Shalom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Rick, your mic is muted. Hey, I'm fighting with this back and forth stuff. I uh, gotta remember mute, unmute, mute, unmute. All right. Anyways, Patricia, I'm gonna end this with you. Go ahead and uh, make your final point. Um I just love that we pointed out the verse about coming as children. And I had a really neat experience. I, uh, a few months ago, um, I read through first John, the very beginning of first John. And in the past I had read it over and over and over again in the, you know, and I was seeing through the eyes of the Trinity and it just never, I always struggled. I never could get any of it. I couldn't understand it. Just, I don't know what it was. And, 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 and I read it even more and more to understand it. And then out of the blue, a couple months ago, I was reading it again. And it just all of a sudden, I had this understanding of it that I never, ever saw before. And I was like, that's really cool. And I was just like, 
thanking the Father and everything, and I was talking to somebody, and I really realized it was for the first time that I actually read that passage, not through the the, the false. It was the the doctrine of the Trinity uh, of a Trinity, and I couldn't see it. I couldn't hear. I couldn't listen. I couldn't see it because that doctrine was more embedded and more important in my brain than that. And I thought it was so cool. I just, I, I couldn't even believe that's why, and I, that's how I equated the understanding. I'm like, wow, I'm not looking at it that way. And that must be why I, yeah. And that's what I figured. I don't want you to bring that. You are correct. It is the doctrines that uh, that you've been taught that clouded your understanding and being able to see the scriptures the way they really are uh, meant to be read and understand, you know. And that's why we have to go through and have our ni our minds renewed, and that it only comes through the scriptures uh, study and by the ruach. And I think those are the combination of what's helped you and all of us really. Uh, to come to a better understanding of these things. So, very good. It is coming as a child and laying down all of those things which we learned in the past that were wrong and renewing our minds to the truth of, really, the Torah. You know, uh, without the Torah, the foundation, nothing else is going to make any sense. It really doesn't. It's all confusing, um, and the doctrines are way off because they, they do not line up with the truth of what the scripture is telling us. And we've heard that confession, uh, that testimony, that witness by many people here today, you know, that came out of that, you know. So I encourage everyone just to continue to come in with an open mind and dig into these words, pull them apart, and see really what is it saying to you. And get rid of all. The way I have to do this as I come into this is as, as, uh, Others have said, I've spent my whole life in this, and that's a lot of indoctrinating, a lot of false doctrines that I've been raised in, and I had to erase all of that and come in this and say, okay, I'm going to go at this and look at this and see what is it really saying now, and not just one verse and try to build a whole message around that. Let's take the whole scripture and see what it says, and by doing that, it's changed me completely because now I understand scripture like I never did before, and everybody else is telling me the same thing. They've never heard Scripture understood it the way they do now, and I think that's one of the reasons besides the fact that now we actually have the true Ruach that is giving us this and teaching us this. So, Aluya, thank you, Patricia. Uh, I don't want to leave this without asking Milo if she has anything she'd like to add because she's always got some good input or good questions. So, uh, and I've seen Kefa had his hand up too, so I don't see her. Is she around the brother D? I see the hand up now. Yay. I'm, I think I got, oh, there it is. Can you hear me? You're very faint. Okay. Shalom, I don't have anything to add. Shalom, everybody. She doesn't have anything. She's good. Okay. Wow. I think that's the first time I've ever heard those words. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean it that way, but you know, I always look forward to those questions anyways. Uh, <laughs> Jeffa, uh, I'll, leave, I'll leave your final word with you then. No, my final word is, um, I love you guys, man. That's all, man. I have nothing to say. <laughs> Very good. Well, thank you all for your participation and your, your input today has been encouraging, has been enlightening, and much appreciated. Shabbat shalom, everyone.